sodium bicarbonate, this simple white powder that everybody knows is in the kitchen, also called baking soda, is probably the single simplest, most cost-effective thing that you can do for your health and well-being. And I'll show you all the process, also, by the way, how to test how much you need. So it's really simple. You're, you're, we've got this scale, the pH scale. Up here is about 14, very alkaline, and down there is one. Sodium bicarbonate comes in at about nine, so it's slightly alkaline, strongly alkaline, in fact. So what happens is, by the way, here's the sodium bicarbonate. What happens is we have in our body a, a bicarbonate store. And that bicarbonate store is all through different organs of the body and so on, and it helps balance out the acid that we produce. So every time you do some exercise, movement, any form, you are producing an excess of acid. Now your body tries to get rid of that through various strategies. One strategy, if you're running, for example, you know, you breathe more. Why? So get rid of the carbon dioxide, the carbonic acid from the blood in the carbon dioxide, get rid of it. So that's one. The kidneys is another one. And after those two, and a few other try to balance it out, if you're having too much of the acid producing lifestyle, e.g. the acid producing diet, which is primarily your carbohydrate based diet that most people are living on. So it's the breads, it's the grains, it's all of those things, it's the sugars, it's the processed sugars. All of those are strongly acid producing. So your body says, okay, I've got to get rid of it because we have a really small range in different parts of our body that it works, the chemistry works. And if you change the pH, it stops working. If it goes down, it stops working. So your body tries to keep it in this perfect little balance. And to do that, it has this bicarbonate store and it works on balancing out the blood. But if you're eating so much processed food, another reason to get off the processed food, that's producing the acidosis in your system. How do you balance that? Well, the first and foremost is you actually eat the veggies, the nuts, the seeds, the herbs, the spices, all those things. They tend to be much more alkalizing in the body. And that's what we should be consuming, not the processed diets that we have and the processed foods that we have and the processed drinks that we have. That's what causes the acidosis and therefore all the other problems, which I'll mention later. But what happens is we store it in different parts of our body. And our body manufactures sodium bicarbonate. So you can, it, it stores the sodium bicarbonate. You can actually consume sodium bicarbonate to increase your sodium bicarbonate store. You can also have salt, NaCl, table salt. You see, table salt gets a bad rap. Table salt is actually very good for you, not in a processed diet where you're having too much of the wrong with all the sugary and other things, but in balance with all the other minerals like potassium and magnesium, it actually works quite well. The sodium goes to form sodium bicarbonate and the chlorine goes to form the hydrochloric acid in your stomach. Wow. In fact, it's the perfect, you're right, it's the perfect mineral balance in there to actually help with digestion. So table salt, good quality table salt, not the out of the pack, you have to get good quality because it's got lots of other minerals and nutrients attached to it. Now the third source, of, of the third major source of sodium bicarbonate is potassium citrate. Now potassium citrate is converted in the body after it's done a few really nice, really good things. It's converted into your body to sodium bicarbonate and it has an alkalizing effect. Now you can get potassium citrate as a supplement. I generally don't recommend that one because you can get it in virtually all of your fruit and veggies. But um, things like moringa, uh, bananas, rock melons, watermelons, they're all rich in potassium citrate and lots of other things too, which are going to help you, okay? So all of these fruits are rich in potassium citrate in the body. It's converted to sodium bicarbonate and it goes into the stores where your body can call on it anytime it wants to balance out that pH. And remember, your pH of your body, a small change in the pH of your blood and it doesn't work. Small change in the pH of the blood no, no, doesn't work. It has to be precise. And that's why your body, that's why your body has this bicarbonate store in there. And what it does is it alkalizes all of that acidosis, all those acids. Um, even by exercising, as I've highlighted, and even on food, you're producing it constantly all the time. So we constantly need to be replenishing our stores. Now, where are the stores? Where are the major ones? Well, the first one, and I'll work down the digestive system is in the mouth, the saliva. And this is a really good one because what happens is when you, whenever you eat something, okay, your 
um, you digest it and the enzymes in your mouth need an alkaline environment around about 7, 7.2. And this is a really good way to test if you have a decent, you ready, a decent um, bicarbonate store. Now I've got my pH strips here. Really simple. Here's one, hope you can see the color. That's the, the normal one. That's with my saliva. And what this tells me, and everybody should do this. I, I went and got a simple pH test kit from a chemist. That's not, any brand is fine. And it costs about $10. And it's the, the information you get from it is, could save your life, literally, and could save your kidneys. And so with what this shows me is that my pH here is around about seven, pretty close to seven. And as a result of that, I know that I've got a good alkaline store. I've got a bicarbonate store. So you need to do that. All you do is put some saliva into a little spoon or your hand, put the pH paper in there, mix it around, hold it in there for a while, turn it out, and then check the color of it to check it. So that your mouth is, is critical. Now, it's also critical to have a pH of seven because seven in your mouth stops the nasty tooth decay and gum disease bacteria. Oh, really? Yeah, simple. So if you're testing it, it's going to tell you. In fact, your chemist, sorry, not your chemist, your, your um, dentist should be checking this all the time to see what your pH is in your mouth. Because if it's slightly acidic in your mouth, e.g. about 6.5, it's telling you you don't have a good bicarbonate store and it means you're going to get more dental decay. It's a win-win situation if you just do a simple check like that. And that's the only way that you can really test it without having blood tests done. So my message, my message is here, go and do that little pH test. It's really, really simple. And your mouth saliva should be around about seven. Then we get onto your stomach cells. So we've started um, uh, eating some food and so on, it goes down and your body produces hydrochloric acid. Now you've said, why doesn't it digest itself? Why doesn't the hydrochloric acid, which is meant to digest proteins and things, digest your own stomach? Because your stomach produces sodium bicarbonate as a protective device. And it produces it if you've got enough <laughs> store. And if it doesn't, then it will struggle. So you've got to make sure you've got enough sodium bicarbonate because it then helps protect, literally, your stomach. Now, um, if you've seen my other presentation on Helicobacter, Helicobacter survives in the stomach by stimulating the production of sodium bicarbonate. It uses one of our own devices. That little nasty bacteria uses one, one of our own devices to do it. So by producing more sodium bicarbonate around itself to protect it. And so um, the stomach, and it stops us self-digesting. Now, the next part is in the intestine, in the small intestine. If you've got a good acid stomach, you've got really good digestion occurring, it opens up the sphincter, the little muscle ring, and it sends all of the stuff from the stomach into the small intestine. Now, that's very acid. I hope it's very acid because that's what it's supposed to be. And as soon as it opens, and just about when it's about to be released, your pancreas produces sodium bicarbonate and releases it in. And that sodium bicarbonate neutralizes, alkalizes, neutralizes the pH, the acid of the stomach. So in the small intestine, your pH should be about seven or eight. Now, there's another little factor in there too. Your, your body produces bile and bile also has a pH of about eight. So everything is about getting at, why? Because in the small intestine, the enzymes that digest your food work best, you ready? When you have slightly alkaline environment in your small intestine. And from then on, it gets more and more acidic in the large intestine it becomes acidic. And of course, I'll put up a presentation on this on my YouTube so people can understand how the pH of the digestive system runs it, it controls it, everything. So what I'm saying here is really telling you that this is what controls so many factors. If the pH is out anywhere, you'll end up with constipation or diarrhea or the wrong type of bacteria or SIBO or gut or bloating, all of these conditions at the same time. And so you've got the pancreas. Now you've got the um, release in the small intestine, and then you've got the kidney. Now kidney is one of the other ways that your body gets rid of the acid. But if there's too much acid, if there's a metabolic acidosis, it literally damages the kidneys. So your kidneys have a store of it and they ha use that store and that store alkalizes it and then enables you to pee it out constantly. It helps get rid of it. So really, really simple, has to be there. And your blood. now. Your blood has a pH, you ready? I've got this 7.365. It has to be precise. If it goes a little bit above, 
you're in trouble. A little bit below, you're in trouble. So your body will do anything, anything. That's why deep breathing is very good for you. That's why having alkaline foods is good for you. That's why having sodium bicarbonate. So the question is, how do you take the sodium bicarbonate, okay, to get all this happening properly out here? Well, it's really simple. It's half a teaspoon, I'll repeat this again, half a teaspoon of sodium bicarbonate mixed in with some water first thing in the morning, away from food, always away from food. Now we're coming back here, and the primary aim of the sodium bicarb is to alkalize the body. It alkalizes the mouth so that the bacteria don't grow and so the digestive enzymes can work. It alkalizes the small intestine, so it helps work there and all the way through. But if it doesn't, then you end up with metabolic acidosis. And while severe metabolic acidosis is really, really severe, and I, I, I mean, um, you will have to be in hospital as a result of it and tests done regularly and so on, most of us are suffering from subclinical metabolic acidosis. And as a result, we suffer from chronic illness. And we know that chronic illness is linked in with this. Um, hypertension, gout, oh, gout is classic. Um, you, one of the first steps you can do to help eliminate gout or lower the risk of gout is sodium bicarbonate because the gout crystallization in the toe, the normal spot for gout, other places too, but in the, in the large toe, relies on an acid pH in the blood. It's one of your body's, your, your blood's way of getting rid of it out of the blood by making it into a crystal and hiding it in the toe. And so if you're not getting that message, check out my video I'll put up on, on gout as well. So chronic illness. We also know, by the way, that the chronic kidney disease that's associated with all of these issues um, is created by the same factors, the processed sugars, the processed carbohydrates, the processed diet. That's what causes kidney damage. That's what causes the imbalance in um, uh, the acidosis, the increased amount of acid and the inability to balance it out. And so you've got kidney disease and kidney stones. One of the primary things of kidney stones is, is your body's ability. It's got the acid in the blood. It says, okay, I don't have enough acidosis. I don't have enough store, sodium bicarbonate store to be able to alkalize it and balance it out. So what do I do? I make it into a crystal and I hide that crystal somewhere until I've got enough sodium bicarbonate to get rid of it again. But if you don't replenish it, e.g. you're on a processed 21st century diet, then guess what? It's not going to be replenished. You will end up with kidney stones. That's inevitable. That's inevitable. That's why all of the research shows that alkalizing helps eliminate and reduce your risk of developing kidney stones. There are other factors in there, e.g., again, uh, the sugary and processed diet. Um, it's interesting that um, uh, bicarbonate is actually, <laughs> bicarbonate, by the way, is used in severe chronic um, kidney disease. So they actually have a specific tablet and they'll give people a tablet of sodium bicarbonate and they say, off you go, This take this every day and this will reduce, the, it'll slow down the damage being done. Not reverse it, but usually slow down the damage being done. There are lots of things that we can do in here. So um, now they also use it with cancer treatments. It's an adjunct in cancer treatments because uh, cancer cells are very acid forming. They produce, I think, about seven times more acid than the other cells. They love sugar and they love the carbohydrates that we feed them in the junk food um, uh, diets that we're on. And so it produces lots and lots of acid. And one of the things that they find is sodium bicarb actually helps neutralize that and helps work with the chemotherapy and other therapies they're doing, which also tend to be acid forming. So it helps alkalize during those, those treatments. Finally, there's another treatment. So I'm pretty sure I've convinced you to start taking um, uh, sodium bicarbonate. There's another treatment that's very effective. It's just as a mouthwash. Now, sodium bicarb is used in a lot of the um, alternative uh, tooth washes and mouth washes. But all you really need to do is go get a little bit, put in a bit of water, wash it down like that and spit it out. Hold it in your mouth a little bit because it helps alkalize the mouth. Right Now, it's not a long-term benefit, but what it is going to do, it's going to get rid of those nasty, acid-loving bacteria that love causing dental decay. So a little bit of sodium bicarb wash down. Athletic performance, and here it is. You may have been waiting for that one, but sodium bicarb has been overwhelmingly, hundreds of studies showing that it benefits athletic performance, particularly short-term burst sprints, any sprints of any time, swimming, heavy weights, running, um, and sports, you know, when you've got to do these big sprints all the time, sodium bicarb helps 
neutralize it. And why does it help neutralize it? Because at the end, what, with all that activity, you're producing acids, and then what it does is helps to alkalize that so your body can perform at its maximum. Now, we also know that from horse racing because sodium bicarbonate in most countries is banned as a horse racing supplement. Yeah, it's actually a supplement they give the horses that improve their athletic performance when they're running around a track over one or two or three minutes, however long horse races go for. Because those short sprints, it improves their performance. So we know it works in the horses, we know it works in athletes, so it'll help with us too. Now, one other one I'm just going to, going to put in there too, which is really critical. And this is something that nobody is really aware of. And this is one called SIBO, small intestinal bacteria overgrowth. Now, you'll remember back here, I talked about how the pancreas alkalizes, right? It alkalizes the small intestine. Now, if it doesn't do that, and your small intestine stays a little bit acidic, it's a perfect breeding ground for all of the toxic microorganisms. They're going to produce gas. And as a result, you end up with small intestinal bacteria overgrowth or fungi overgrowth. And it causes bloating because the gas that it's producing can't go down. It's too far down to fart out. Whoops, sorry about that. And it's too high up to come out, excuse me, as a burp. So what goes on? It causes this bloating, a lot of pain and severe gut-related problems. So SIBO, one of the simplest things they did with SIBO in a test in, the, in a study in the 1980s, they grabbed some mice who had SIBO, they injected the mice and the small intestine with sodium bicarbonate, and within a second, SIBO disappeared. Within a second, the, the gut started working again. Within a second. Now, I'm not suggesting you, you get a, uh, an injection, but what I am telling you that if you supplement with sodium bicarb first thing in the morning, Away from food, now remember, you're gonna, but doesn't that react to the hydrochloric acid? No, it doesn't. Because there's a bit of a freeway for liquids to go through. When the stomach's empty, it just passes through pretty quickly, okay? And it goes through and it goes in your small intestine. And instantly it goes in your small intestine, it's alkalizing your small intestine. And this is a strategy I've been telling people for about 10 years in terms of management of bloating and so on. And people have just come back and said, what, what was I told you? It's so simple. Does it work for everybody? No, because there are lots of other factors in working on the bloating and SIBO. Again, I'll show you in some of my other videos uh, when, I, when I finish putting them all up. But SIBO is a big, big condition out there and the sodium bicarb first thing in the morning does all of this and here. I think by now I've convinced you it's probably gonna cost you a cent a day to do this and you just do it first thing. However, there is one disclaimer. Do not have it with a meal. You don't have it with a meal because your stomach has to be acid to digest the foods. So when you eat a lot of food, your stomach becomes um, slightly alkaline, which you don't want in the stomach. It gets confusing, doesn't it? But it wants an acid stomach, so it produces lots of hydrochloric acid. If you put in some sodium bicarbonate, which is an old remedy for reflux and not a good one, it's gonna alkalize your stomach acid and stop the proper digestion of your proteins and your B vitamins and your minerals and all of those other things and create lots of nasty ones. Now, um, check out my video on, on, on uh, apple cider vinegar because I talk about the acid stomach in that one. And so what happens here is that sodium bicarb does the exact opposite of what you want in the stomach. So you do not consume it with food, okay? You get that idea? Two hours either way or a half hour, 45 minutes beforehand is okay because then it'll have time to go through the system. But if there's food in the system, it'll stop, it'll alkalize the stomach and you don't want that one. So definitely no-no. Now, if you do have acid reflux, it's pretty simple. You alkalize it with sodium, with um, uh, vinegar, which I've already told you about the video on it. Uh, and if you've got an instant reaction, okay, go to the chemist. And here's one I'm actually going to tell you, Gaviscon. I don't normally recommend medication, but the Gaviscon uh, works brilliantly. It's got a little bit of sodium bicarbonate, but a small amount, which sets off a reaction and gets an algae, an alginate, to form a layer over the top. So you only use a small amount of sodium bicarb, the reaction occurs, but you have it well after a meal again. So this is a simple trick for reflux. And in the meantime, we're sorting it out because you're following all the other videos. Please subscribe and share this uh, because the more we get this information out, I will make it also clear again, I'm not a medical doctor. I'm the guy who does the research and shares it with the doctors so they can understand this. Uh, unfortunately, um, uh, not enough it is getting out there. So I'm relying on you to help me subscribe and of course, share this information.